Mr. New York, Mark Simone on WOR. Well, hey, uh, Chris Cuomo fired. No, this is not an old story. <laughs> He's gotten fired again. We'll get to that coming up. We'll get to Alec Baldwin. We'll get to uh, Putin and Biden. We'll get to the Fox Christmas tree. We'll get to Ghislaine and uh, a whole lot more as we head towards the uh, to middle of December, practically. December 8th already. Now, that means there's three weeks left of Bill de Blasio. Did you ever think we'd make it to the end of de Blasio? Three weeks left. Uh, we'll go over that a little later on. Uh uh, we'll get to. Did you, Joe Bartlett? Did you see the beginning of the Putin Biden uh, Zoom call? <laughs> so typical, isn't it? <laughs> Can't get yeah, straight. Now, <laughs> there is no actual media anymore. There's no news coverage of anything anymore. They just hide everything. They refuse. If this were Trump, it, you would have been seeing this all day and night. It would have been breaking news. Putin opens the Zoom call with <laughs> whatever he wanted to say, and then Biden says. Yeah, nobody could hear him because he couldn't get the mic on. He couldn't <laughs> work the Zoom. <laughs> He's looking down. They immediately sent for his grandson to come over and show him how to work the computer and turn on the sound. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And, uh, Did you see Putin rolling his eyes? Yeah, yeah. It's he knows Biden what he's and, dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> Biden, forget, forget going to war. Forget blocking them in Afghanistan. Just trying to turn the microphone on in the Zoom. This was a five-minute project for Biden. But when he got that mic on, he looked right at Putin, looked him right in the eye, and he said, <sighs> and uh, that was about it. So also the visuals of it, to, uh, Biden in the Situation Room with Blinken sitting there, uh, Jake Sullivan sitting there, the two biggest idiots in the world, two guys that are bumbling fools when it comes to foreign policy, two incompetent bunglers. You look at uh, how well they did evacuating uh, uh, their personnel from Afghanistan. Uh, they forgot. They forgot to do it. So uh, they're sitting there just as a reminder to Putin that Biden has nobody to turn to except these idiots. He's got the worst staff, the worst foreign policy people, the worst cabinet. And they cut to that shot of Putin sitting alone. at the, Did you see that long table he was sitting at? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know... You don't know if there may have been somebody else in the room with Putin, but it yeah, looked like he been. was alone and very confident. But Biden was at this uh, table. It's the situation with that long table you've seen. But, it's, uh, it, it, but it looks like the business center in a Marriott, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, right. Yeah, the curtains, the wood of the table. It looks like, uh, uh, it looks like you're in a Hilton somewhere in a conference room you've rented. Uh, when they cut to Putin... I don't know what the hell that table was, but that looked like the finest wood. That table looked like it cost half a million dollars. It looked that, like that was his summer house, wood. apparently. Oh, and it's his house. Yeah, yeah. it's his house. Yeah. It's his house. So <laughs> that is his house. They said it was his summer house in uh, Sochi, I think. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's an incredible piece of furniture, and it's not just his house. It's his summer house. But if you look above him, you can see surveillance cameras on the wall. <laughs> This guy doesn't trust anybody. Uh, I guess he's going. What housekeeper's going to steal from him? I don't think he needs the uh, needs the surveillance cameras. So, uh, what what is it? I keep saying Biden was firm with him. What did he say that was so firm? Uh, there'll be economic consequences. <laughs> you know that's a pretty good threat because look what he did to us with the economy. <laughs> He's only been in office 10 months. We've been hit with economic consequences. He's destroyed our economy. So that's actually the one threat he can make. <laughs> he didn't mean he would uh, put on sanctions. He meant, I'll come over there and run your economy and destroy that too. So uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know what the result of that was. Is this Jake Sullivan? Uh, let me see here. The United States and our European allies would respond with strong economic measures. We would provide additional defensive materiel to the Ukrainians above and beyond that which we are already providing. And we would fortify our NATO. See, that's how you talk to Putin, like that. You say, I'm but sure he's pulling those troops right out. You know, oh my yeah. God, I better get him out of there. And you notice he didn't say, uh, and, and different material. He said, and materiel. You see, that's a fancier mm, way to say yeah. it. So this, uh, this fancy way is going to really impress Putin. So... Uh, you got to remember, we know that Blinken's an idiot. We watched him 
handle Afghanistan. He forgot to pull his embassy personnel out before the military left. He just didn't do it, and he has the power to do that. He doesn't need anybody to do it. He can order his, his personnel out. He knew the uh, military was pulling, so he screwed that up. Uh, Jake Sullivan is a complete bungling idiot. Now, we know all this, but you got to remember, Putin knows more about Blinken and Sullivan than we do. Putin and his intelligence guys know everything about these guys, so they know how weak they are, how silly they are, how bungling they are. They know about Lloyd Austin, who messed up completely. Austin and Milley completely screwed up the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And that's not fighting a war. This is the easy thing. This is just picking up your weapons and leaving. This is just, this is like running a moving van, just moving everything out. That he couldn't handle. So they know all of this. So I don't think they're afraid of anybody. Now, what's this all about, really? Do they want to take uh, Crimea? Do they want to invade the Ukraine? Are they looking to cause a coup? Uh, no one knows. It's possible that all of this is just a uh, big farce and that the, what they really want is to get paid off to pull those troops out. They want some massive concessions from the U.S. Or they want a payoff from uh, Biden. So you do this, you put all the troops there, and then you hold out for something to pull the troops away. Now, when it comes to getting payoffs, you know, you can do this sometimes. Uh, you bluff a certain president, and he gives you massive consent off to stop. Uh, but you may have picked the wrong president here, because with Biden, he gets the payoffs. He's never given payoffs. He's, <laughs> he's not used to this. So when you say this to Biden, he's going to go, wait a minute, I bribed somebody? I thought it's the other way around. He's not going to be used to this at all. So it's a, now, remember, this situation is being watched carefully by China because as soon as this is over, China will pull the same thing, whatever it is, an invasion or a, a blackmail to get something in return. And then uh, after China does it, Iran steps up next. <laughs> so one thing about Biden you see he can't handle the economy, he doesn't know anything about budgets, doesn't know anything about running a military, doesn't know anything. But you figure, well, 40 years in the Senate, at least he knows foreign policy. I think it's pretty clear now, this guy knows nothing about foreign policy. He's the worst foreign policy president we've ever had, worst domestic president we've ever had. Now you say, well, what could Trump have done? It's, it's an entirely different matter with Trump. First of all, he comes into the room with a whole different aura about him. And thanks in part, the media portraying it as some crazed madman, lunatic. Uh, that helps in foreign policy. They used to call it the madman theory. Nixon used it a lot. Uh, they'd have Kissinger uh, run around the world saying, that guy's crazy. He's a madman. Don't you? He's, I don't know what this guy will do. So it scares enemies. That's why North Korea stopped all of that nuclear testing during Trump's presidency. That's why China behaved. That's why Iran behaved. And they tested him in the beginning. Remember, there was a little test by Iran. All of a sudden, rockets were flying. Uh, bombs were hitting Syria. So that, that kind of stuff, you got some, uh, some leverage when you go in the room because they know you'll push the button, you'll do anything. With Biden, let's say he wanted to launch a nuclear attack. We saw him try to get the mic on for the Zoom conference. That he couldn't do. <laughs> so <laughs> he was looking around. <gasps> Which, uh, uh, so... Even if he tried to launch a nuclear attack, he'd have the wrong code, the wrong button. you got to remember a code. That guy carries the football. You know, that's the nuclear stuff, the suitcase. There's that guy always 10 feet from Biden with the nuclear codes in there. But it's not that simple. He can open it up, and you still can't do anything. You have to have what's called the biscuit. That's a little card. It's like a big plastic uh, card. It's in the president's pocket at all times. You have to stick that into the football to activate it. And uh, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but uh, when that guy opens that case and Biden's, what, what's it look like? Yeah, uh, trying to find it. I think uh, I left it on the dresser. Not, it, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to find it. It's not going to happen. Uh, in fact, Hunter has probably got it and has already sold it to somebody. So, hey, the good news about hey the Fox News tree. Uh, did, what time did that happen? It was around. I heard it was around midnight. The Fox News Christmas tree? It was late in the evening, yeah, yeah, late. Yeah, uh, there's, uh, in front of the, you know, if you walk down 6th Avenue, uh, you, of course you've got Rockefeller Center, you've got Radio City, uh, uh, the tree is uh, between 5th and 6th. Uh, but as you walk, walk around 6th, there's all these great Christmas decorations, those big, huge ornaments, uh, there's the big, huge uh, candy canes with all the lights on it. Uh, when people come in to see the Christmas tree, they also walk along 6th Avenue 
and they see all this stuff at the Time Life building. All these different buildings have Christmas decorations. And then you get down to 47th, and there's the Fox News building. And it's not the best Christmas decoration, but it's just a big, big Christmas tree with lights on it. And some guy last night, apparently, a, is it a homeless guy? Do we know that yeah. for sure? Yeah, he's homeless, right? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, so he climbed the tree and lit it on fire. And you've, you've seen the video. It's all over the Internet, all kinds of video. Del Frisco, the big steakhouse is across the street with massive windows. So apparently everybody was watching this, uh, especially the staff. Some of the staff I know, and it's up on their uh, Instagram video of the tree, and it just went up in flames instantly, huge flames. So the, I'm not sure if the tree was just some extremely flammable material or the guy had an accelerant gasoline or something and poured it all over it. But, boy, that tree went up fast, the flames soaring. Quite scary if you look at the video. Fire department showed up quickly, put it out. One thing about the Fox News building, I'm, I'm in there a couple of days a week, that Fox News building is the most secure, protected building in the world. There's a number of uh, NYPD that are assigned right to the front of the building, standing right there at all times. There's also Fox security, big, huge guys all over the place, dozens of them in front of the building. Also those big uh, guard dogs, everything there, so... They got it real fast. Now, the NYPD uh, sources are saying they don't believe this was in any way political or a protest, correct? Yeah, it's just yeah, probably with some drug issues. <clears throat> yeah. So, and it's the only thing, if you go up and down those uh, ornaments there, the ornaments, like the big ornaments, those are in a big uh, pool of water, so it's harder to get to. It's the only thing you just jump on uh, and light. All the other stuff's hard to do, so... Uh, doesn't look like anything political at all. But um, so uh, speaking of cable news, Chris Cuomo was fired yesterday. Oh, no, you're saying, wait, wait that was Monday. No, he was fired Monday from, uh, well, actually Saturday from CNN. Uh, Tuesday he was fired, uh, Monday he was fired from Sirius, his radio show. And he sets a new record. Uh, yesterday he got fired from Harper Collins, his publisher. <laughs> That's three times he's been fired in one week. You got to give him credit for that. That was pretty good. Three times in one week. Does he have any other jobs? Can we uh, get him fired from anything else? I don't think so. No, I think that may uh, be it. <clears throat> wasn't he on his uh, co-op board or something? Maybe we can get him off that too. <laughs> so uh, he was fired from Harper Collins. It shocked the world. Not that he got fired but that somebody gave this guy a book deal. I don't think he's ever even read a book. He was going to write a book, apparently. What was the book about? Bringing people together? Or yeah. mm -hmm. uh, healing the divide in the country? Here's a guy who goes on TV every night screaming that everybody's a racist, uh, insults half of America every show for the whole hour, calls every Trump supporter names, and he's writing a book about how not to divide America. So it looks like it's going to be a real battle with CNN. Uh, they have fired him. And apparently Jeff Zucker said in the meeting with all the employees, he had like a town hall meeting, Zucker said there will be no severance. He lied. We have grounds to fire him. A law firm uh, did all the research. He's fired. No severance. So that's what the lawsuit's about. He wants severance. Uh, supposedly it's $6 million a year, three years left, $18 million. We don't know if it's really six. You know, a lot of times you read these numbers. Uh, this person's getting this much, and they're not just not true. They're just... Numbers somebody leaked out once and exaggerated, and then every other story picks up the same number. So we don't know if it's six, but whatever it is, he wants severance. He's hired a great lawyer for that. This guy did uh, Megyn Kelly's settlements, but it was different with Megyn Kelly. Uh, they just wanted her gone. Uh, Fox paid her, I remember, like $17 million to leave early, and then NBC paid her like $20 million to leave early. That's how bad she is. People will give you... 20 million just to get the hell out of the building she's made like 37 million in just get out of here money so uh but chris cuomo i don't think this is going to happen they had a big big top law firm do the investigation so i'm sure the law firm absolutely investigated can you fire him did he violate the contract according to the actual contract so but he's got this top lawyer cnn has a great lawyer who helped them in their lawsuits against donald trump so they will go at it uh, for quite a while. Probably, maybe, if Cuomo's lucky, they'll just want to get uh, get rid of this lawsuit and give them $5 million or $10 million to go away. But sometimes they hate you so much and you just drive them so crazy 
that they say to themselves, you know what, if I go ahead and write a check for $5 million, I'd rather write it to the lawyers than to you. <laughs> if we have to pay $10 million, I'd rather give it to my lawyers than give it to you. So the, the lawsuit may continue for some time, and they may try to uh, wear them down. Uh, did you see that Alec Baldwin video last night? He went to visit somebody, somebody yeah. who lives in a townhouse. Do we know who it was? We still don't know, do we? No, I'm not quite sure who he's visiting. But Yeah, he's walking down the street, and... Uh, He's going to go uh, knock on this door. And the wife is, you notice every time the paparazzi or reporters follow him, the wife takes out her phone and she starts filming them as if this is some massive threat. Did you see her? She, that's all you see is her holding her phone. I'm recording you. Good. So what? Send that to my boss. He can see I'm working hard. I'm following you. <laughs> so she yells, I told you to leave. Get out of here. And then. Uh, the reporter yells something like, we're on the sidewalk. It's a public street. You can't uh, tell us to leave. And he's yelling, who are you visiting here? Who are you going to see? And then uh, Alec Baldwin turns around and sees what's going on. He, he'd been at the door knocking. He sees what's going on. And it was a little uh, light rain, so he had an umbrella. You see him pick up his umbrella, and he points it at the guy as if he's going to charge the guy. He starts walking towards the guy with the umbrella oh. sticking out like a sword. Yeah, he's a guy who didn't fire the gun. Well, only the, that's what the guy said. Did you really pull, not pull the trigger? Yeah. So if you watch the, I, I'll put the video up for tomorrow. You can see he points his umbrella at the guy and just walks towards. It's like he's going to, it's like a lance. It's like he's a, a knight on a horse charging him. So, and, By the way, that uh, was Woody so, Allen's townhouse, Mark. Woody Allen's townhouse. Oh, he was going to visit Woody Allen. Yeah, well, I don't know oh. if Woody was inside. That's his townhouse. I assume so. Yeah, somebody opens the door. and Yeah, he was going to see Woody Allen probably. Now, there's a guy who knows how to avoid scandal. This Woody Allen. <laughs> that's, that's a good guy to consult. But uh, uh, it looked like Alec Baldwin was going to kill this reporter and uh, probably a voice in the back of his head said, you just shot two people. You just killed somebody. This is too much. Don't do it. So he, he, he stopped. Anyway, uh, we'll get back to that. Check out the webpage. Uh, we always put up new video every day, uh, which you should take a look at. Uh, and today, I'm waiting for it to come up. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, well, we'll find it. You just go to 710WOR.com slash Mark with lots of good stuff up there. Uh, here is a great one. This is This is perfect. It's Don Lemon. And he's interviewing Morgan Freeman, and Don Lemon is trying to talk about how racist everything is and incoming. Watch Morgan Freeman straighten out the moron, Don Lemon. This is a great moment where Morgan Freeman just tells Don Lemon he's full of crap. Uh, it's up on the webpage. Go to 710WOR.com slash Mark. 710WOR.com slash Mark. This is The Mark Simone Show. 710WOR. Hey, we'll take some calls. 800-321-0710 is the number. 800-321-0710. Let's go to Joe in Long Island. Joe, how you doing? Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. I wanted to... I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to. Just tell me if I can. I wanted to comment on the Arizona election audit. It seems to be a taboo subject. Is, would it be all right if I said a few things about it? Gee, I don't know. That's pretty rough. I don't know. Joe Bartlett, what do you think? I mean, this is uh, too much. It's, I don't know. I've been waiting know, for the latest news out of Arizona. Very well, taboo. They, let me just say they did a, an initial recount, and they found that you know Biden did win. But the problem was, you know, the media ran with that. But then they started the actual audit, and after they dug in, they found a lot of problematic ballots for Biden that should have been disqualified. The media didn't tell you that part. So I'm just wondering what you think about that. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Joe Bartlett, were you listening? Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I don't. It's, <laughs> you know, I, we, we really should be over that, I think. But. Yeah, I think, uh, listen, uh, the election was probably stolen, but legally, if you look at that research on what Facebook did, uh, you know, when it comes to these uh, fake ballots, phony ballots, counting, that always happens, and that's about 1% or 2 or 3%. Uh, maybe not enough to make a difference. But uh, was it Miranda Devine? Whoever investigated the Facebook stuff and brought that to light, they found a way to legally tamper with the election. They went into 30 critical counties, spent a fortune bringing out certain votes that wouldn't have been there, uh, 
And that may have turned the election. It's totally legal. You can do it. And it cost uh, Zuckerberg $500 million to do that. Uh, so that may have been what really made the difference in the election. It might have been simply that. So, uh, again, these recounts, all that stuff. Uh, obviously, there's always some election fraud. There's always some bad ballots. Who knows how much? But thanks for calling, Joe. Let's go to Sandra in Brooklyn. Sandra, how you doing? Good morning, Mark. How are you? Let me check. Uh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> you know, I wanted. I tried for a few days to get through. I, I was not able to, but I'm glad I'm on today. You know, I just wanted to ask you, remember that interview with Alex Baldwin? No one ever mentioned the commentary he made about Donald Trump. I'm wondering, was that deliberate, so not to give it any power because he doesn't deserve it? Or did you ever hear that comment he made? About Donald Trump? Oh, we lost her. Well, I, yeah, uh, Donald Trump, the worst uh, enemy uh, on television is probably Alec Baldwin. But Alec Baldwin, uh, you got to remember, just hates everybody. You know, obviously he hates Donald Trump. You can see from the impressions he did. But he hates everybody and everything. He's had a fight with, he's like, he's like Andrew Cuomo. He's threatened, fought with, yelled at, uh, been abrasive with everybody he's ever worked with or come into contact with. You know, you got to look at this situation. Alec Baldwin a major movie star, TV star, nobody, nobody anywhere has come out to defend him. Nobody. You would think, uh, even Lorne Michaels, who he spoke, you'd think he would have come out publicly and said something on his behalf, or, or Tina Fey, who he worked with, or any co-star. Nobody has come out and said anything about him. Look at Andrew Cuomo, guy's governor of New York for years. Not a single person in government has come out to defend him. Not anybody. It's a, a very similar situations. Uh, these two guys. Uh, anyway, we got uh, lots to get. We'll get to Bernadette Castro in just a moment. Uh, oh, actually, wait. We got time for one more call. Let's go to Rob in Long Island. Rob, how you doing? Hey, Mark. Thanks for taking my call. You know, uh, in the news, uh, no one has been talking about the increases in the uh, health insurance premiums with respect to small businesses and the individual market. And I was just wondering at some point, maybe I could listen to you or, you know, prod people along to really start investigating that the promise of these rates being controlled, everyone's going down to $2,500, you can keep your doctor. It's a total joke. And, and Yeah, small well, that's a good point. But it comes down to, uh, I hate to say it, when Democrats take office, insurance companies pay them a fortune. Their lobbyists are spreading around tons of money, the law profession, the insurance profession, and they can do whatever the hell they want. And as long as Democrats are in charge, nobody will crack down on them. Now, uh, November next year, Republicans take both houses. You may see a huge difference, but you never know. They'll be spreading that money around to Republicans in Congress, too. And uh, I wouldn't trust them either. When we come back, Bernadette Castro will be with us. Uh, we'll get uh, lots to talk about coming up next on 710 WOR. Let's get the latest news. Here's Joe Bar. This is the Mark Simone Show. 710 WOR. Well, here's one of our favorite guests, Bernadette Castro. Great name in the, in the business world and government and... Uh, uh, our Long Island correspondent as well, Bernadette Castro. How you doing? I'm doing not that great. I'm fighting this cold. You know, there's something bad going around. It's not COVID. I've been tested like every other day, but it's tough. So let's move on. And I'm not coughing. I promise. Oh, I know how a lot you? of people that have, have that and they're all running around getting tested for, uh, but it, luckily it's right. just a cold going around. But it just goes to yeah. show you, you're uh, getting too close to people or not wearing the mask or something like that. No, it's true. You know, we dropped our guard, all of us, I think, when we were vaccinated and we had the booster shot. And, you know, all it takes is one unkind person to go somewhere with a bad cold and not tell anybody. And I think that's what happened to me. So, you know, it's not yeah. fair. So if you do have a cold, wear your mask. Hey, I like uh, anyway. Bruce Blakeman. Bruce Blakeman's going to be the new county executive in uh, Nassau County. Laura Kern, very nice woman. But uh, there was definitely a Republican sweep out there uh, in Long <laughs> Island. So, well, but what needs to be done, right? You got to lower taxes. You got to do uh, if that's possible. Well, I think you know. Oh God! Yeah, you are Mark. choking to death. You see, <laughs> uh, cold. Yeah, um, Bruce is great. He's had a lot of experience, and I really think he's going to do a job. And you know, he's reaching out for transition people to help him. So I'm confident. I think he's going to be good. 
Yeah, yeah well, I'll let well. you cough for a minute because uh, the other thing is you got you got to battle the legislature. It's tough. You got to fight the legislature. But he used to be in the legislature, so he's uh, pretty good with that. He knows them well. That's oh it. yeah, I think Nassau County is going to be fine. Um, you know, the taxes are terrible. I'm going to be honest with you. People are still, you know, hiring the van companies and getting to Florida. It's uh, Florida, Texas, Tennessee. It's really tough. All right, and until I think taxes are really focused upon and make it easier for people in business to stay here, people that own properties to stay here. You know, New York City will always be New York City. And yeah. Long Island's gorgeous. I love it. I live here. But, you know, if, if you told me, you know, when your father started his Castro convertible business, you know, where would he have started? And had he known, well, he did open in Florida big time. But, I mean, it, it, I'm not sure. New York made him because the buildings were vertical. Any space-saving opportunities were in New York. His product was generic. However, yeah. from a business point of view, investors today, you know, have to look outside New York. I'm telling you, it's, it's very difficult. But I want, can I talk about Alec Baldwin just for a second, go off topic? Yes. Yes. Oh, we, by the way, we so, just got the video. We put it up on the website. Uh, he almost killed right. somebody yesterday, too. <laughs> yeah, I heard you talk about it. But, you know, I was thinking about the incident, and I was watching those awards last night, the People's Choice, and Dwayne Johnson won it. What a nice guy Dwayne Johnson is. And then I thought, what if this was Wayne, Dwayne Johnson or Kevin Costner or Tom Hanks or Clint Eastwood? How would they have reacted? And I know it would be totally different. Alec Baldwin does have an issue, an anger issue. He's very overly self-confident, self-centered. I have to say that. And, and I know his mom, Carol Baldwin, she's such a wonderful woman, uh, a cancer survivor, and she's got these sons. But Alec, you know, he's not reacting the way he should be. That's why no one's coming to his defense. You know, you, there's the old saying, you know, be careful how you treat people on the way up because you're going yeah. to meet the same folks on the way down. OK, yeah. he is not as kind, certainly as Dwayne Johnson, who blew me away last night with his speech. And I didn't realize uh, what you know, who introduced him oddly last night, oh. Jeff Bezos. OK, one of the richest men in the world gets on the stage because he's good friends <laughs> with Dwayne Johnson. It was too much. But, you know, there are great acting heroes, whether it was John Wayne in the old days. I mean, you know, I'm just very disappointed in Alec Baldwin. He was aggressively mean-spirited about Trump, which wasn't nice. So anyway, he still he's got his issues now. He's got his issues now. Yeah, he still hasn't explained this incident. You know, you mentioned Clint Eastwood. There's five million movies with Clint Eastwood pointing a gun at 10,000 people, shooting them every second, and they never had an accident. You know, I'm watching Private Ryan. There's scenes with 500 people shooting at everybody, never a single accident. Uh, so Alec Baldwin yeah, still has not explained this. Right, and George Clooney spoke up and I guess said publicly, I always check my gun myself. Yeah. And Alec Baldwin went ballistic. How can George Clooney criticize me? He attacked George Clooney for that comment. So, you know, he's got issues. He's got to calm down. He's got to be much more compassionate. He's got to start apologizing. He's got to stop shifting blame around. It was a horrible, horrible accident. But, you know, uh, anyway, that's, that's my deal about him. I've only had to work with the guy a couple of times, and he was a horrifying nightmare each time. Just a horrible human hey. being. I don't think he's capable of apologizing or anything. I just well, wonder about this woman. The, the woman that married him, she seems like a, a little nutty. And uh, uh, we have the video up on the webpage. Where he, as he's about to attack the photographer with an umbrella, she stops him. So at least she is saving lives. So we'll give her a little credit. Uh, right yeah, now. you know, she's, I think, um, an odd duck. You know, they fell madly in love. There's a big age difference. She's a trainer. She got him in shape. She's taking good care of him and all these children they have. So, you know, I'm happy for them as a couple, but you know, she's a bit odd, but so be it. You know, there, I, I don't want to judge that relationship, but I also want to jump topics about China a minute. Um, I'm so happy. We're not sending a delegation to the Olympics. Let me tell you something. China hates the United States of America. What they want is the Chinese flag to fly here. 
So we got a problem in that this little tiny country in Africa, I forgot the name of it. Um, they're on the yeah. Atlantic Ocean. And now China has made a deal with them. China will now be on the Atlantic Ocean with a military base capable of hitting our East Coast. We better damn well do something about this. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't so sound good. They, it doesn't sound good. No, they've never, they've always wanted to fly the Chinese flag. And I know we do business with them. You know, Jeff Bezos is like, you know, everybody does business with them. The, the Tesla owner is over there big time. But diplomatically, you know, we have to step in and really stop that military base from happening. And I think the United States is trying to step in, but I'm deeply concerned. So, right, you know, that's, that's a serious thing. Don't rile them up too much because you could stop production of my iPhone 14, and I don't don't want that to happen. So, uh, All right. That, we, no, that's what I mean. That <laughs> yeah, we're well, in a very I, awkward position with China, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, actually, we're, I hate but, to say we're out of time, but uh, Bernadette Castro, feel better. Uh, and oh, uh, thank stay, you. All right. I'll talk to you and, soon. And listen, can I say one quick thing about state parks? Go online. Go. If you want to rent some fun cabins in the winter, go snowshoeing maybe in Allegheny State Park. These cabins are great. They got a couple of bedrooms. They got a kitchen. They got heat. Do it. Oh. Get out Where there. Where do you go? Where do you go to? You go to New to York rent. State Parks. Just Google that, and then you just oh, okay. click on cabins, and all the parks will come up. There's high end cabins, and then there's rustic ones. But it's such a wonderful family experience. But uh, you know, I just want people to be encouraged to get outdoors. If you're in an urban area, you don't have to spend your whole time in the urban area. You know, yeah. snowshoes right, well, aren't that expensive. Okay. Good, good suggestion. She's the former parks commissioner. Good suggestion, and thanks for being with us. Uh, oh, oh and check so out the. Much, Mike. All right, take care, everybody. Check out the webpage. We got the Alec Baldwin video up there. He almost kills a guy last night. Take a look at this video. He attacks a. Uh, the wife stops him from attacking a photographer oh also you'll love this video it's morgan freeman watch him straighten out don lemon uh it's all up on the web page go to 710wor.com slash mark 710wor.com slash mark